All right, Jim, our final question sent to cornydrivethrough at gmail.com from Roderick in Arkansas. That's a lie. There's nobody in Arkansas named Roderick. First, let me send well wishes to the lovely Stacy on a speedy recovery. Thank you. And by the way, her back is doing better. She's still just a little stiff, but she's up and about now, and the, the incision is just a little small thing at this point. Theodore Long said in a recent interview that Ric Flair hated him. <laughs> so much so that, according to Long, Gary Hart made a blade for Long and said, quote, if he keeps bothering you, you take this blade and cut his goddamn throat. <laughs> Does Jim know anything about this and what could have potentially caused Flair to hate Teddy Long? Was it race related? Side note, Teddy Long also accused Ole Anderson of being a racist towards him as well. Well, I don't think Ole Anderson was a racist toward Teddy Long. I just think Ole Anderson is a grumpy human being toward everybody, and he likes to let people know it. Um, as far as Gary Hart making a blade for t I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know what was going on in Gary's mind, but Gary, as, as you know, carried a blade around from his days as a manager that had heat because just in case, and he had to use it a couple times, once in the locker room, at least with the missing link, when link sucker punched Gary and Gary fucking sliced link from asshole to appetite. Um, but at the time that Gary was there in the NWA, it was 1989, 1990. Teddy had just become a manager. Ric Flair was the booker for a good part of that. Gary was being used on top with Funk and Muda. I don't, I don't know why that Gary would have suggested to Teddy that he cut the booker's throat when Rick was using it. Maybe there was some heat about how the, the, you know, the, the, Gary Hart's stable was getting used. I don't know. I've heard Teddy fucking say how bad that he that he was couldn't stand Flair and that Flair was an asshole to him. I don't know what would have caused it. I never saw it. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying I never saw it. I know that when Flair was the booker and Teddy had first started managing, that there was no issue. We were booking Teddy just like we'd book anybody else. And he didn't say anything bad about him in any meetings. And, you know, we used doom, blah, blah, blah. I know wh probably when Teddy was a referee at that point, you know, he's a referee for the TBS shows on Saturday morning and he's hauling the ring and maybe flair talked down to him then. Cause he was just the ring guy or the fill in referee. I don't, I'm not, you know, it wasn't something that, Rick did on a regular basis, but I'm not saying that it, it couldn't have happened. But you don't remember any specific things from booking meetings like, I don't want to use this guy, I hate this guy. No, if he hadn't wanted to use him, we wouldn't have been using him. You know, and and, and I never heard Ted Flair say anything bad about Teddy, you know, when, when there was no reason for him not to. <laughs> you know, it was like... If we, like you said, fuck, I don't want to book that guy or fuck, he's the shits or something like that. No. Um, so I, maybe it was just, I like Teddy. We've always gotten along. Love Theodore Long. Obviously, I like Flair and I owe a lot to him. He helped me out, you know, a ton and getting a, a lot of my spots. Um, I don't know why that they, I don't know. if Does Flair know that Teddy hates him? And does he give a shit? I don't know anything about this. So I don't know what caused it. And who knows if it was misunderstanding or what happened. But I, I, can't, I can't pick a side and I can't comment because I don't know what the fuck's going on with it. Remember they did that angle in 1990. It was actually pretty cool. In the midst of all that Black Scorpion shit. Where Flair got Teddy Long as his limo driver or his butler for a day. And he's driving Flair around, they're filming it, and he pulls into an alley, and Flair's like, what are we doing here? The door opens, and just like five guys drag Ric Flair out of the car in his suit, down the alley. It's like a horror film. He's like, get in, let me go! You have to wonder, what are these five guys going to do to Flair? And how's he ever going to get home? Meanwhile, there's Ron Simmons of Butchery just casually walking up to the car and posing with the car. But I mean, Teddy and Flair working there was great.
And that's 90, that's the end of 1990. And goddamn, you've just acknowledged that they were kidnapping people back then too. You know, since we raised the I didn't, issue. I didn't write that one either. Since we raised the issue of abduct everyone wrestling, haven't been too many kidnappings. <laughs> I guess kidnapping season ends in January, approximately. Kidnapping season is over. <laughs>